Good afternoon. I'm Andrea Vasquez, PSC First Vice President. Thank you for tuning in to this live, as you can see, roundtable discussion, CUNY Rising Alliance and the New Deal for CUNY. Before I hand off to Lucas Sanchez, who will facilitate, I want to say a word about today. The Professional Staff Congress is holding this 24-hour virtual action to culminate our summer of struggle and launch into an even more intense period of action as we all confront greater attacks on all things public. This summer, our union and the CUNY Rising Alliance joined in the fight for racial justice, education justice, and budget justice. We received support from scores of legislators, marched together, and held multi-borough caravans at CUNY headquarters and in CUNY communities. We fought CUNY's negligence on health and safety and waged a legal battle against CUNY for the nearly 3,000 layoffs of adjunct faculty. The education of hundreds of thousands of students of color was transformed and interrupted by COVID-19, but we will continue to build our power through coalition work. The PSC is proud to have the Alliance and their guests here to discuss our path and our vision forward. Thank you. Lucas. Thank you, um, Andrea, for getting us started. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lucas Sanchez. I am Deputy Director with New York Communities for Change. Um, and uh, it's great to be here with all of you. Um, and it's great that we are continuing this 24 hour um, uh, movement day um, on behalf of CUNY. Um, so uh, we are very excited to talk today about the CUNY Rising Alliance and the, and the role that the CUNY uh, Rising Alliance um, plays um, not only in the city, but in the state of New York. Um, we're gonna have, uh, we have great guests, um, but before we get started, I wanna make sure that everyone has an opportunity uh, to introduce themselves. All of our panelists have the opportunity to introduce themselves, as well as the elected officials that have graciously uh, joined us today. So I am going to, uh, just to make this easier, I am going to call on folks as they are, on my screen. And if I could just ask you to just give your name, uh, your title and the organization or the district that you represent. So um, Luke, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, Lucas, I'm up. <laughs> yes, you're up. Yes. Okay, great. Hi everyone, uh, Luke Elliott Negri uh, with the Professional Staff Congress. Uh, sorry, Lucas, tell me again, do you want me to talk about the legislation right now or just introduce No, 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 no. Just, we're doing introductions. Sorry, Luke Elliott Negri um, uh, with the Professional Staff Congress, the Executive Council, uh, uh, university-wide officer. Thanks so much. Thanks, Luke. And again, I'm just calling on folks as I see them on my screen. Um, uh, Andrea? Well, I introduced myself, but thank you again. I'm the first vice president of the PSC. Thank you. Uh, Jen? I'm Jen Gavori. I'm the Hunter College Acting Chapter Chair of the PSC CUNY and do a bunch of organizing work with CUNY Rising Alliance and other things. Thanks so much. Your mic is off, Lucas. Oh, here we are. Okay, uh, next on my screen uh, is Jamel. Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. Jamel Henderson, four time graduate of the City University of New York, inaugural doctoral candidate at the College of Staten Island and the CUNY Rising Alliance coordinator. Happy to be here with all of you. Thank you. Uh, Senator Gunardis. Hey, everyone. Uh, Senator Andrew Gunardis here from the 22nd District down in Southern Brooklyn. Uh, I am a Hunter College uh, alum as well as a former adjunct professor at Hunter. Thank you, Senator. And I share a birthday with Jamel. Very important. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Senator. Uh, Senator Jackson. Uh, Robert Jackson, State Senator in the 31st Senatorial District, 13 miles of Manhattan, from Marble Hill down to Chelsea area. And I am on all three education committees in the New York State Senate, uh, Higher Education, Education, and New York City Department of Education. And I'm an education activist. Thank you for joining us, Senator. Um, Assemblyman Godfrey? Hi, I'm Assemblyman Richard Gottfried. I represent... Uh, Chelsea, Hell's Kitchen, a lot of Midtown, a little bit of the Upper West Side. Uh, I chair the health committee in the assembly and my father went to City College and my mother went to Hunter. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Assemblyman, and we absolutely- oh, Also, my mother was a long, long, long time UFT member, so I've got union blood. <laughs> we love hearing those connections to CUNY. Um, Tiffany.
professional staff congress. I am the legislative and communications associate, and I'm also a graduate of Queens College. Great, thank you, uh, Tiffany. Uh, let's see. I know that we have uh, some other legislators that will be joining us later, and when they join us, we will certainly give them an opportunity to introduce themselves. Um, has Alithia joined us yet? Uh, no, not, not yet. yet. Okay, great. So um, thanks everyone for introducing themselves, um, and we look forward to the to the conversation that we're going to have. So I want to talk about the CUNY um, Rising Alliance. Um, you know, CRA, mm -hmm. the CUNY Rising Alliance, got its start in 2015, and it came together for a very simple reason, uh, because we understand how important uh, public higher education is um, in the city um, of New York and in the state of New York, uh, of New York and, and nationally, right? Um, it is, uh, CUNY has served um, low-income communities, black and brown communities, um, and now more than ever, it is under attack um, and at risk of losing more of the resources that it needs um, to ensure that some of the most um, uh, energetic and brilliant uh, young minds uh, that we have in the city, um, you know, will not have access to quality, affordable public higher education. And CUNY Rising Alliance um, stands um, for this, believes in this, um, and is committed to working with all of you, all of our allies, all of our partners, um, and ensuring that CUNY uh, has the resources that it absolutely needs um, to continue to serve our, our students. Um, we have been joined, um, for folks that just joined, we had some brief uh, introductions. So um, Senator Kaplan, I'm gonna give you the opportunity just to introduce yourself. Thank you, Anna Kaplan, New York State Senator for District 7. Um, I have residents, constituents that actually go to many, many CUNY schools. I'm happy to be here with you and to hear from you. Thank you, Senator, for joining us. And um, Alithia Rodriguez uh, Rolon has also joined us. I uh, thank you for the opportunity to be part of this event. Thank you. <clears throat> and Yvonne. If you want if you could introduce yourself. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this event. My name is Giovanni Piquant. I am the Vice Chair of Legislative Affairs for the University Student Senate. Great. So uh, without further ado, um, you know, we're going to start our program. Um, I will be introducing um, our speakers, uh, like Andrea said earlier. Um, you know, we really want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to speak and we want to make sure that we also have an opportunity to field questions um, from folks that are that are um, engaging with us today. So um, I am going to pass the mic um, to Jan Gaburi from the PSC, um, who will introduce our first speaker. Hi, um, I am thrilled to be able to introduce today uh, not only my friend Andrew Gennardis, but my own uh, state senator here in Southern Brooklyn. Um, so um, I remember really clearly um, uh, having a conversation with Andrew when he was still a candidate. Um, and then shortly after his election, when he said uh, the same thing, that he was going to make CUNY one of, of three priorities for him um, in his work. Um, and to sort of say that <clears throat> it is for people who know and, and focus on legislative work, and especially for those of us who do advocacy work within the legislature, um, for someone to really say, this is going to be really one of my priorities and things I'm going to focus on, and I'm uh, is... A, a real pleasure and is extremely important. Um, and, you know, uh, we have a lot of stalwart supporters here on the call today, but if we had enough support from every single Senator and Assembly person who said that they loved CUNY, then we wouldn't be having, we wouldn't be having and discussing the problems that we're having, you know, we're going to talk about here today. Um, uh, I, one of the things that Andrew and I share is a real love of public things. 
um, and supportive public things. And that's part of why we're here. Uh, I, I hope that um, in the future, uh, I have a picture here of Roosevelt House at Hunter College behind us. And one of the things that we know is that a college, right, of Hunter College was built during the Great Depression. And at other stages in this campaign, I hope we are all together in person. And that one of the places we are either signing or celebrating this legislation is at the home of the Roosevelt's, which is part of Hunter College. Andrew, thank you so much uh, for being here and for your ongoing work, uh, not only in this legislation, but <laughs> in support of CUNY students um, and everything that, that you're doing. And Senator Gnardis, if I could interrupt you real briefly, I yep. do have one more introduction to um, do. Uh, we have been joined by Assemblywoman uh, Richardson. Um, Assemblywoman, if you would like to introduce yourself, please. Assemblywoman, if you're speaking, you're on mute. Okay. Well, maybe uh, we'll give her an opportunity. Uh, there she is. Nope, she's still unmuted. Mute. Okay. So, uh, Senator uh, Gnardis, um, if you could go ahead, please. Great. Thank you so much, Lucas, and thank you, Jen, for that introduction. Uh, it's great to see so many friendly faces on this call, and hello to everyone out there who's watching this. This. Uh, really important conversation today. Uh, as I said, you know, I am a proud graduate of the City University of New York at Hunter College, but my story with CUNY predates my, um, my graduation from this institution. My parents met at the Greek Club at Brooklyn College back in the 70s. So I would not, I would not be here physically uh, were it not for CUNY and were it not for Brooklyn College and for uh, bringing my parents together. Uh, I'm also, as I mentioned, uh, someone I, I've taught at CUNY, I've taught at Hunter, my brother went to Brooklyn College, so CUNY in so many ways runs through my blood. Um, and it's fitting that we're here talking about a new deal for CUNY because, as Jen pointed out, so much of the foundation of this university system was created during the Great Depression when we literally had a new deal for the country to put the country back to work, to invest in the human capital of our people. Uh, and we created, we built Brooklyn College, we built Hunter College, we expanded the university system. That's what we need to be doing now in this moment of crisis that we're facing. And we know this crisis that we're facing predates COVID. There's no doubt about that. And so we need to be committing ourselves to it, to an ideal as to what we believe the role of a public university is in the 21st century. I believe that it is a fundamental part of everyone's public education. That is why I have introduced a constitutional amendment to make New York State the first state in the country to guarantee free quality public education from pre-K all the way through post-secondary. Whether you go to a four-year institution or a two-year institution or you get some type of post-secondary uh, education. That is what a 21st century public education demands of us. And that's the type of standard that we should be holding ourselves to. Now, everyone's gonna say, how are you gonna pay for it? That's incredibly expensive. Things that are worth investing in oftentimes are incredibly expensive. And it's funny, just this morning, I was scrolling through Instagram after I woke up and I saw one of, you know, one of these inspirational memes popped up in my feed. And it said, if you ask yourself, how are you gonna pay for it or it's too expensive, you'll never accomplish those goals. What you have to ask yourself is, how are we going to reach these goals? So we know if we all commit ourselves to the idea that CUNY and the City University is something worth investing in so that it's free for everyone and that we can have a world-class physical infrastructure with campuses that are the envy of the world and we can have a, a faculty that is well-paid uh, and highly credentialed and we can have a student body that doesn't have to decide between buying textbooks or buying lunch. If that's the type of ideal that we are all going to um, commit ourselves to, then the question shouldn't be, or the statement shouldn't be, it's too expensive. The question should be, how are we going to pay for it? And I think one of the ways we can look at this is twofold. Number one, it's a substantive um, funding question. Number two, it's a matter of rhetoric. I really am, a, I appreciate how Jamel introduced himself and said that he is a four-time graduate of the City University of New York. Because in my mind, I know we all love CUNY, to me, when I hear the word CUNY, CUNY is a, is a government program that gets cut and that gets stuck with austerity politics. The City University is an institution that you can't turn your back on. The City University is an institution that's worth investing into because you know that every dollar you invest in the City University will have a tremendous return on that investment, you know, tenfold if not more. 
And so I think one of the areas we need to look at when it comes to funding the city university and all the things I just outlined and more is we need to think about this through an economic development perspective. And instead of us trying to squabble over, you know, crumbs at a budget table over whether we can increase funding uh, 10 million here, 20 million there, this or that. Let's look at funding for our public institutions of higher education as a matter of funding for economic development, because we know that, like I said, every dollar we put in will result in enormous economic benefits for our city and for our state. And so that's where I think we need to be pushing this conversation. I know that that's one of the elements that we're, we're going to be talking about, not just today, but down the road, about leveraging economic development dollars to invest in all of the campuses that make up the, you know, the world's greatest urban university, and that's the City University of New York. So uh, I'm really happy to be a part of this effort with you all. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, and I know we have some great legislative partners and some great advocacy partners who are part of this effort and part of this coalition, uh, all in furtherance of the same goal. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator. Um, <coughs> we'll, would like to point out that Jamel is working on his fifth junior degree uh, as we speak. He's showing uh, us all up. That's, that's it's okay. We get it. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, I certainly appreciate um, uh, you highlighting uh, the just the economic engine that CUNY is for the city. And I think that's something that we absolutely have to continue uh, to recognize. So thank you for that, uh, Senator. And I also just a bit of housekeeping. Just want to remind you that um, Andrea Vasquez is going to be consistent um, with her uh, timekeeping today. So just want to remind you all of that. So um, I now would like to uh, pass the mic to Alicia uh, Rodriguez uh, Rolon, uh, representing NYSET. Hi, everyone. Um, I neglected to say that I'm legislative director at NYSET uh, when I was introduced earlier. So my apologies for that. Um, but I'm actually glad I'm going after Senator Bernardis to talk about the CUNY New Deal, something that we are working closely with PSC and the Senator's office in developing. Um, I also am an alum, Baruch, um, so I am extremely invested in this project for a number of reasons. Um, and one of the great things I think about this proposal is that we are not only talking about accessibility, but making it meaningful, which is something that Barbara Bowen always says making sure that our students have access to the most um, high quality education possible. Um, so I look forward to working with everyone and partnering on this um, proposal and seeing it come to fruition. So thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Um, and um, I think uh, I, I love the fact that you, you, you stressed your connection to CUNY. I think one of the themes um, of our conversation, uh, anytime we talk about CUNY, is how much uh, CUNY touches the lives of so many um, people in, in, in our city. So um, I would like, I'm honored to introduce um, Giovanni um, Picon, who will um, raise uh, her voice uh, representing the students um, of, of, of CUNY. Giovanni? Thank you, Lucas. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for being on this call. I've met many of you all elected before colleagues. Uh, it's nice to see you here still in the fight with us. Today is actually the first day of class at CUNY, so I'm studying my junior year. But also, it's the first day of class, and uh, we have a tuition hike that still has to be voted on. So essentially, if we do get a tuition hike this year, students will be finding out their tuition is going to go up in the middle of the semester. Um, but I really want to talk about the New Deal for CUNY and what this means for us, especially in this time. As we know, CUNY is an institution that predominantly serves 80% Black and students of color. And CUNY was free once upon a time. And when more people who look like me started to enroll, that's when they decided, well, this is when we're going to put the price tag on it. And we know that what that does, when you put a price tag on education, um, rooms that give people access and opportunity for upward mobility, it eliminates people. The higher the price gets, it starts eliminating and eliminating folks. And the New Deal for CUNY essentially is a new deal to relook at how we look at higher education at the City University of New York. What are we saying to the black and brown students who are coming here, who are making something out of nothing? Um, these are folks, the average medium household income is $30,000. Uh, how do we expect students to continuously go to college, 
the price of tuition is put on their backs. We hear the politics, the governor, the elephant in the room, the city and the state. But at the end of the day, we still have students who are on the line. We're facing an eviction crisis. We're facing housing crisis. We're facing food insecurity, mental health concerns. Students are starting a semester. Not all CUNY campuses have a food pantry. Not all CUNY campuses have proper infrastructure or ventilation circulation. And all of these concerns are the ones affecting black and brown students. When we say we want to move CUNY to a free and fully funded university, we're not saying just give us a sound education because it's free here, it's free, here you go. We need this to be fully funded with support services for students to help them not only embark and know that they have an opportunity and they have access to higher education, but how can they sustain themselves in higher education? And we need resources to help our students such as tutoring, food insecurity, mental health, all of these services that helps one thrive. Because it's not just going to college and I'm just gonna go to class, we need people to support our students. We need more faculty who look like us. We need New York State and the legislature and elected officials to put higher education as, on, as a priority. And we have really great allies here who continue to fight endlessly. But I think what's important, um, like Lucas mentioned, is and, and Senator Andrew Gennaris mentioned, is the rhetoric. What, how do we let New York City know that we cannot move past this time in history without investing in higher education, without saying that we're going to make this a priority? And I'm a junior. My grandmother has nine kids. Eight of them have gone to CUNY multiple times. I'm a product of CUNY. My dad was an adjunct at CUNY a long time ago. I used to sit in the classrooms while he was teaching. So I know what CUNY has done and I know what CUNY can do. And I'm here only because people believed in me and pushed me and inspired me to keep going. And I think every student deserves to have that hope and you know inspiration to keep going no matter where they come from, no matter where they look. And that starts within our classrooms. That starts investing in CUNY and not just saying, we're gonna give you access to higher education, but we're gonna make it harder for you to get in. We're gonna cut the corners for you. We want students to have access and opportunity and to continue to thrive. So when we say we want CUNY to go back to a free institution, a fully funded institution, an institution that believes in us, an institution that knows that it's a part of New York City and a part of what we're doing here today. So I hope you all are strong champions of New Deal for CUNY and we look forward to continue working with you all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Giovanni, uh, for your words. Um, and if it's not inspiring to, to listen to Giovanni speak, I don't know what is. Um, it's for students like Giovanni um, that we fight for. Um, and um, Giovanni, you're certainly a tremendous asset um, in, 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 in when you speak uh, and in terms of representing uh, the student body. So thank you for your words. Um, I would like now to introduce um, Luke Elliott Negri, uh, representing the PSC. Um. Thanks so much, Lucas. Uh, I'm just going to speak very briefly uh, about uh, one or two aspects of the New Deal for CUNY legislation um, that we're uh, proposing. One uh, uh, is, is around hiring additional academic advisors and mental health counselors at the City University of New York um, to, uh, to reach national standards. So, uh, so CUNY is far below their standards and uh, we need to, to hire the support so that students can make it through CUNY and make it through in a timely manner. Um, and, and another piece of this legislation I want to speak about um, uh, very briefly uh, is uh, hiring additional full-time faculty and also increasing uh, the compensation of adjunct faculty. And to me, this is a very um, concrete example of how uh, teaching uh, teachers' working conditions are students' learning conditions. Um, I, for example, have written letters of recommendation for students uh, uh, who I uh, taught on campuses that I have not been to for three years, haven't been on their payroll for three years, and I have written those letters of recommendation because I'm dedicated to those students. Um, uh, the same for students who, for example, uh, uh, have incompletes in their classrooms. I've, I've graded papers a year or two after I've been off the payroll of a, of a, of a campus that I've taught on in the past. Uh, so there are many dedicated adjunct faculty at CUNY, many thousands of them. However, this is a broken model. We need uh, far, uh, ultimately, fewer adjunct faculty, those committed adjunct faculty who've been on campuses to be converted to full-time positions. And we need to hire full-time faculty um, who are there on campus consistently for decades so that they can 
Um, be there for the students. Um, I, they, I shouldn't have to be writing letters of recognition for someone uh, three years down the road, although I'm willing to do that. Um, and so that is just one piece of the New Deal for CUNY legislation, but a very important one. Uh, and finally, I just want to say thank you to my own uh, state senator, uh, uh, Anna Kaplan, for being on the call. Senator Kaplan, thank you so much for, for being here. Uh, I had to shout you out since it was my uh, turn on the mic. And uh, back to you, Lucas. Thanks, everyone. Thanks to all the uh, uh, members and CUNY Rising affiliates and uh, elected officials who are on the call. Uh, thank you, Luke. Uh, and I'm also a constituent, constituent of Senator uh, Kaplan, so want to uh, echo Luke's words. So um, we've also been joined by Assemblywin, Assembly Member uh, Yulene Yu. Uh, we're so happy to have you. Um, Assembly Member, I want to give you the opportunity uh, not only to introduce yourself, but I know that you have a tight um, schedule and you need to leave early. So wanted to give you the opportunity to both introduce yourself and hear your remarks. Thank you so much for giving me just this short period of time to speak. I know that um, I have to, I, it, I'm so sorry that I have to actually jump to another event, but um, but I just wanted to say that, you know, we have to listen to our students. We have to listen to our faculty here. Uh, yes, and NUF is in the house. Um, I am a National Urban Fellow. Um, I, <laughs> I have to prep, prep that because um, that makes me a Baruch Bearcat and I love CUNY. I will say that I would not be here if it wasn't for my uh, CUNY education. And I also wouldn't have had the opportunities if I wasn't able to be a part of the National Urban Fellows. Um, I think that, you know, we have seen how our state passed an austerity budget um, that severely cut funding to healthcare, housing, and education, um, and transportation. And so back when we were voting on the budget, I said it in my floor speech, and I'll say it again, that when we cut deeply into our school budgets, it means layoffs for our teachers, our educational professionals, and our kids need them more than ever. Our students need our professors more than ever. And I think that it's so important uh, that we recognize that. Along with um, the pandemic and the austerity budget, the systemic racism that has long existed in our society has uh, come to light in a major way uh, after the horrible murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and so many others. But it also is showing the systemic racism in the funding towards CUNY. The majority of the students who go to um, our schools, our CUNY schools, are, are students of color. And I think that it's really important that we recognize that. And there are so many of us who um, had to work and do school at the same time because we couldn't afford to just go to school. I think it is so important that we are recognizing these things because um, CUNY has long provided education and opportunities for so many of us um, who have needed it and couldn't have possibly afforded it. Uh, otherwise. And I think that, you know, it's uh, improper funding of CUNY is a part of that systemic racism that we are seeing throughout our society. CUNY uh, has, has been the lifeblood of this city for so long because of the economic opportunities and the fact that we are um, providing, we're literally the economic engine for, for our city and for our state and then for the country. And so I think that there's a lot of things there that we have to unpack. Like, what is it that, um, you know, makes it so that we're so crucial and critical and yet so underfunded, right? Um, and I think that it's because there are choices that are being made which make it so that um, obviously we're not put as a priority. Uh, the budget cuts that CUNY already has faced after the budget was approved um, and uh, will be, I mean, it'll be hard work to to get through in the next coming months and years. And, and we have to fight to ensure that our institutions like CUNY are given a fighting chance. Um, I just wanted to say that for uh, every single person who uh, voted with us on um, the budget, which is voted no on the budget, um, you know, there was there was a lot of reasons. And one of my reasons was the cuts to education um, and the cuts to health care. And, and I think that we have to listen um, when CUNY is, um, you know, asking for such basic help right now. Uh, we have to listen to this new deal. We have to, sorry, there's my dog barking at the ambulance. Um, so we have to make sure that we are actually, um, you know, listening to our students when they speak, and we're listening to our faculty when um, they're they're speaking. Because, um, as you know, uh, and, and and by the way, I want to say thank you for asking for more full time positions because um, we know that a lot of our adjunct faculty. Um, can't make ends meet. And we saw, I, I, I talked to several of our adjunct faculty who, um, who have to file all the time uh, for housing help. 
and it is difficult. It is difficult to see when uh, a lot of our adjunct faculty are taking on full loads um, when they're asked to, and they still can't make ends meet, and they're not um, able to even provide for their own housing, and some are now homeless. I think that it's really, really critical that we are uh, taking into consideration what this um, entire environment is now doing to folks. Um, and so I wanted to say thank you for all of you making that ask. Thank you, um, Assemblywoman. We certainly appreciate your words and particularly um, appreciate that you brought up the murder of George Floyd um, and Breonna Taylor because uh, when we talk about CUNY and when we talk about the movement for Black Lives, um, you know, we have to talk about the um, you know, public higher education um, that serves communities of color. So I really want to appreciate your words. Um, I would like now to introduce um, our next speaker, uh, Tiffany Brown uh, with the PSC. The capital budget, but before I get into the capital budget, the fact that uh, Assembly Member New brought up George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, I would also like to mention that Akai Gurley was also a CUNY student and he was killed, unfortunately, due to state sanction violence. So we have to like really look at that in context that like our students are meeting a variety of issues that are happening out in society and they bring this to the CUNY campuses. And many of these campuses are overcrowded, dealing with breaking escalators. I'm a graduate from um, Queens College and I've also have experience working as a student organizer at BMCC. And you know, I had to do like trainees at Hunter College. And I remember when the escalator is broken and you have to march up all of those stairs to get to one classroom. Or even at Mega College, where you know they had temporary trailers and now they're used as full-time classrooms. So these are the capital needs that we need to address. And we believe that the new deal for CUNY will address those needs because. If we're saying that black and brown students that are coming from the K through 12 system that are also being met with a variety of issues there. Now they're going into the CUNY system that we say is a great system that produced many people on this call right now as graduates. Why are we not funding their buildings? You could go online right now. You could look at Broken College and they'll have a variety of pictures of ceilings falling, leaking roofs, inadequate ventilation. And we are actively in a pandemic. Uh, that is disproportionately impacting black and brown students that are going back to these communities. Many of these community, um, excuse me, these uh, CUNY institutions are in black and brown communities. I went to Queens College, Pominot Public Housing was right across the street. So if we're going to invest in CUNY, we can't think about it only as, you know, academic advisors, professors and faculty members, yes, but how are we housing those faculty members? Are we protecting them? Do we make sure they have hot water? Do they have soap that they can adequately wash their hands? Again, we are in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> so the capital budget will definitely address those needs. And the overall budget will be, we're estimating it's $5.2 billion. And yes, that is a lot of money, but we also saw not too long ago how the state was more than willing to give you know, that amount of money to a powerful you know, company known as Amazon. So we know that that money does exist. And if we really are you know, um, wanting to invest in higher education, we need to work with our elected officials to produce that money, similar to what Andrew Gennardo said. So for the senior capital costs, it will come to 3.79 billion, we're estimating. And for community colleges, it will be 1.41 billion. But just think about the overall investment that will do to the overall health of New York City and New York State that we know produces lawyers, doctors, teachers, professors, politicians. So we definitely need to invest in our CUNY capital budget to make sure that our students are safe, learning in healthy learning environments and not having to deal with mold or leaking roofs while they're trying to take you know, their exam, but just make it through you know, the day-to-day -day of college. So thank you. Tiffany, thank you so uh, very much for, for your words. Um, and I think you said so many important things, but I think one thing that I, that I wanted to uh, highlight is that partnership with elected officials, um, which is why it's so um, important that we're having this event and which is why it's so important to us uh, as a CUNY Rising Alliance to see the electeds that we have on um, as our supporters and our, our champions. So um, I wanted to... Um, adjust the agenda a little bit um, and introduce um, assembly member um, Diana Richardson. I know that you have a, a time constraint. So um, if you could please um, introduce yourself assembly member, 
um, and we'd love to hear your remarks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Assemblywoman Richardson, I don't know if you're speaking, you're on mute. Okay. Well, um, I guess while the um, assemblywoman uh, figures out that I'm sure it's a tech issue, um, I wanted to go next um, to uh, Jamel Henderson, um, the CUNY Rising Alliance Coordinator. Good afternoon to all of you, and thank you once again, those who are watching live at home on Facebook and on PSC, thank you for being here with us. Uh, my comments important uh, and on the importance about this new deal is to talk about the racial justice. And the only way that I can do that is in the coin phrase that we at CUNY Rising have been taking and soaring with, which is the real CUNY experience. So let me put it to you this way, why this is important right now. Today is the first day of classes. We just found out once again in the black community several days ago that James Blake has been shot and gunned down. Thankfully, he is still fighting for his life. There are CUNY students right now who are organizing and hitting the streets because they feel that in order for them to be successful this semester, they need to know that their lives matter and that they're safe. September 1st is literally one week from today. CUNY students and their families on the, among the millions that are facing eviction right now in the city and state of New York. When they look at myself, Timothy, Giovanni, and many other Black and Brown and Asian student leaders, they do not see someone with the incredible accolades. They do not see the chairperson of the University Student Senate. They do not see the vice chair of legislative affairs. They do not see a four-time CUNY graduate. They do not see someone who's pursuing their doctorate degree. They see Black bodies that is used for either a promotion or for peril. We're living in a time right now where CUNY is on the front lines. CUNY students, faculty, staff, alums are on the front lines fighting for injustices while realizing the urgent need for mental health support services. Our CUNY students have been quarantined over 180 days and counting. And the quarantine isn't going to end anytime soon. There are CUNY students who are in homes right now in surrounding environments where there's gun violence that has intentionally been put into our communities because CUNY students, along with the city, fought to make sure that we finally pass the laws to hold law enforcement officers accountable. This legislation is something that is not going to be the final standpoint, but it is a great start to progressivism for the community and the greatest university in the world that drives the economic, political, and social enforcements to making sure that we have the equality that we're looking for. So I'm coming to you unapologetically as a Black man who lives in public housing, who's pursuing his fifth degree, and representing many people who look like me, whose voices may not be heard, and understanding that this legislation is a start of what's owed to Black and brown communities. Thank you. Thank you, Jamel, for your your powerful words. Um, I mean, I think CUNY, uh, fighting for CUNY is racial justice um, for all the reasons that you and, um, <clears throat> and Tiffany um, and Giovanni uh, have highlight, highlighted. So I really thank you for that. So um, I now wanted to um, go to some of our um, assembly members and senators that have joined us. Um, and I would first like to introduce um, uh, assembly member Godfrey. Yeah, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you know, of all the industrial democracies on earth, the United States may well be the richest, but of all of those industrial democracies, we demand and get less from our government. 
uh, for working people. Uh, and the treatment of public higher education is a major example of that. Uh, whether you're talking about higher education or transportation, and I was just seeing today uh, the MTA announcing more uh, potential service cuts and fare hikes, uh, or healthcare or housing. Uh, we allow the wealth that could enable all working people in this country to advance and to get be educated and housed and, and have health care. We allow that wealth uh, to, be de to be kept away uh, from the public sector. And it's critically important to, uh, to people of color. Uh, it's critically important uh, to everyone in New York. Uh, who does not have extraordinary wealth. Uh, and so I'm excited to be part of uh, a movement for a new deal for CUNY. Uh, because of what CUNY means to me and to my family and to our history as a family and what it means to my constituents and, and to the ability of, of people of color in New York and low-income people and all New Yorkers uh, to move forward. Uh, when I was about 14 years old, uh, and then Governor Rockefeller was proposing to impose tuition on the city uh, colleges, and we're talking back now in 1961, uh, when the city colleges would still have uh, more than a decade of, of being tuition free. The first political demonstration I went to uh, as, a, as an early teen uh, was a demonstration to protest Rockefeller's uh, plan to impose tuition on CUNY. Uh, we won that fight. Uh, we've got to win this fight. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Assemblymember uh, Godfrey, for your words. Um, I would now like to um, introduce uh, Senator Jackson. Hey, everyone. Uh, so, um, you know, we need to act. And so I'm ready to work with Andrew about a constitutional amendment. We need to think about how can we raise the revenue and so that's the type of action we need to do. I mean, this is all good because we're talking about it as to the reasons why, but anyone that, that lives in New York City or knows New York City, anything knows about uh, CUNY and the thousands of, of layoff of, ad, of adjunct professors and based on the statistics that you gave in your draft, um, a new deal for CUNY, you know, um, Talk is talk, but we need to act. And so Andrew uh, and Anna and everyone else, let's think about what can we do to raise the revenue um, in order to get things done. Um, and that's what has to happen. So we need to galvanize uh, all of the CUNY students, CUNY professors and everyone else who believes that everyone deserves a good education from pre-K through college so that we can have the most um, educated citizens, citizens of our state to carry out all of the duties and responsibilities of all of the positions that we can think of from doctors, attorneys, from engineers, from social workers, from you know, professors, all of you can think of. Uh, we need to be able to have uh, an educated workforce to do that. So I'm ready to put our heads together and come up with solutions from a legislative point of view or constitutional amendments so that we can, and obviously constitutional amendments, you know, we have to, that's a longer process than just passing one bill. So I'm ready. Uh, I, I want to listen to the extent that I can uh, in today's time frame, but after this is over, let's get busy. Thank you, uh, Senator. Um, 
Absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the CUNY Rising Alliance is about action. And I think, you know, your words are, are absolutely in point. Um, you know, we have to mobilize all the folks that are connected to CUNY to take action. Um, and your words are certainly welcome. Um, I would allow and I like to give the opportunity to Senator Kaplan. I already introduced myself. I want to first of all thank you for the organizers for this event. It's really important for all of us, the elected, to hear from you to understand how important this issue is. Um, we are dealing with a lot right now in the state of New York, not just state of New York, throughout the country. And we do have to make some difficult decisions as to what we need to do. Um, I can promise you we're having those conversations in the Senate with my majority leader and my colleagues. And um, I will certainly share your sentiments with my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you again for allowing me to take part in this. And uh, with that, I'm gonna get off. I have to also get on another Zoom event, but thank you for including me. Uh, thank you, Senator Kaplan. And we certainly appreciate that. Um, uh, an elected official, right, representing um, the suburbs, representing Long Island, uh, is supportive of this because it's not only a city issue, right? Um, you know, we know that CUNY is uh, an economic engine, not only for the city, but also for the state of New York. If CUNY does well, um, Long Island does well. Uh, so thank you, uh, Senator Kaplan. Um, I would like, we've had some connection issues with assembly member Richardson. Uh, however, uh, we are lucky to have, uh, Tim Hunter, uh, who will not only speak, um, in, in his role as president, um, of, of USS, but also on behalf of Assemblywoman um, Richardson, uh, Tim. Um, so Lucas, thank you so much for, for having me. Um, so usually, I mean, First off, greetings to everyone that's on the call. Um, usually when, I, when I'm on these calls, I'm speaking on behalf of, of USS and the University Student Senate and all the students in CUNY. Um, but today I'm here on, on behalf of uh, Assemblymember Richardson. Um, Giovanni's here on behalf of USS. Um, so thank you for being here. Um, I, I just come to like, you know, again, um, express the assembly members um, overwhelming support for the City University of New York. I mean, she's a two time grad. Um, you know, she's she spent her life, um, you know, working um, tirelessly um, to secure funding for, for school like uh, Mega Rivers College, um, you know, her alma mater and, and other, um, you know, CUNY campuses. And she's a huge advocate for, for public higher education and everything that it's done, you know, for, for the community at large, especially the community that she represents in the 43rd district in Brooklyn, um, you know, and personally, as my mom being a graduate of the same school, um, I know that, uh, you know, the slogan Medgar forever is, is something a lot of the, uh, you know, the alumni of, of Medgar hold dearly close to their heart. And, um, you know, CUNY always has the support um, of the assembly member's office. And, you know, if there's anything that, um, you know, you'll need, uh, the assembly member will definitely make herself available. Unfortunately, right now, um, she's at a community event um, where, here holding down the fort in the office. Um, so we're just, uh, you know, doing what we can to, to try to provide support. You know, she's always been out there, a lot of food distributions. Uh, we had a very busy morning this morning as well. Um, but, you know, because of the, the technical difficulty she's had with turning her camera on and off and her being at the event, um, she just told me to speak on her behalf, but she is listening in. She hears what everyone's saying and she's glad to see um, all of her colleagues here showing support um, for the, the greatest urban university in the world. Um, so Lucas, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to speak. Um, and if anybody has any other questions, comments or concerns about USS, um, Giovanni could definitely take it. And um, you know, it's, it's my pleasure to be here as always fighting for CUNY. Great, thank you, uh, Tim, um, for your words on behalf of uh, Assembly Member uh, Richardson and we certainly appreciate um, her support. So, um, I'm so proud of us. We've done amazingly with our agenda and, and staying on time. Uh, thank you, Andrea, for your timekeeping. So with the time that we have left, um, we would like to take questions um, from the audience. Um, so folks that are listening, uh, we would love to um, take your questions. Uh, please put them into the chat um, and we will address them as we get them. And this is an opportunity for folks um, to ask questions or comment to any of the things that you've heard from our elected officials or from our representatives uh, from the PSC, NYCC, the CUNY Rising um, Alliance and NYSIT. So 
as we get questions, also from the press. We also welcome questions from the press as well. We're, we're very lucky to have um, reps from the press. If any questions are coming in, um, we will certainly, I will certainly direct them to the appropriate person. Um, so in the meantime, as we wait for the questions to come in, I wanted to pose this question to our legislators. Um, what do you think we as the CUNY Rising Alliance need to be doing um, so that we see what Senator Jackson alluded to, right? We've heard a lot of positive words from a lot of folks that say they're in support of CUNY, but we haven't seen that action. So what could we be doing as CRA, as the CUNY Rising Alliance, um, to get more of your colleagues in the Assembly and in the Senate to support the New Deal for CUNY? Uh, Senator Gardens, I saw your hand raised. Sure. Um, I think there's a lot that can be done. Um, I'll share with you one idea that I have shared, I think, with several people on this call, but I think it's important that everyone hears this. Um, I think the movement on the scale that we're talking about is obviously a lot larger than just a handful of students and a handful of uh, faculty and some organizers on a video call. You know, we've all gotten to know each other really well doing this for the last two years since I've been in office. And that's great that we built a lot of momentum behind this. But we need to expand this coalition so that every single student and every single alumni of the university is making phone calls to their state assembly members, is making phone calls to their state senators. We need to make sure that every single donor to the university and all of its related organizations and charities and nonprofits and, and foundations are all calling their assembly members and their senators and the governor's office. Like this has to be such a widespread coalition building effort. And I know that the Alliance is working on, on these things. So this is not a critical statement. It's also, it's a, it's a lot of hard work it takes to organize at this level. But I think the way that we're gonna get everyone moving from just saying, oh, I love CUNY to I need to do this for CUNY, the city university, sorry, caught myself. We need, to, we need to be hearing from more voices that are impacted by the positive, um, the positive impact that, that the university has on them, whether they are students or they were students or they hire students or, or, or any stakeholder in the system. Um, we need to be hearing from a lot more voices. Thank you, Senator. And Senator Jackson, you had your hand up raised. And I also um, related to this, uh, someone from the audience asked, um, you know, what would you like the community to do in support of, of CUNY? So Senator Jackson, if you could address the first question as well as this one, which I think is related. Sure. I agree with Andrew as far as if we look at um, Andrew's bill, if Andrew, if you have a bill, uh, I, I'm going to look at that. Uh, constitutional amendment, we, we know that is not just passing the bill now, but it's passing it now, this session and next session, and then it goes to uh, the uh, vote of the people. But I think it clearly can be done if we continue to organize, organize, and organize. So all of the activists, by if there's a bill, we need to ask every elected public official at the state level and the local level and the federal level, do you support this constitutional amendment so that New York become the, the uh, CUNY, is that CUNY and SUNY both, uh, Andrew, that we will have free uh, college uh, for everyone. And if you support that, we ask you to sign on to the bill. If they don't sign on to it, let me get back to you, okay? So when are you gonna get back to us? You're gonna get back to me in a week, two weeks? Because then there needs to be follow up. Because if in fact they don't support it, we want people to know they don't support a bill that will provide free uh, college education for all New Yorkers. Let's be quite frank. It has to be very, very direct and clear. So you support it or you don't support it. And if you don't support it, why not? What can we do to educate those individuals to <clears throat> yes, uh, based on what my colleague has said or based on what you've said, based on the meetings that I had or based on the 150 phone calls my office received or the demonstrations at my office, I'm on it now. You know what I mean? Because it's pressure if in fact uh, they're not willing to do that. And so that, that's what has to happen. Look at the campaign for fiscal equity. Look how long that took. Look at we're still fighting for it right now. And what's holding it up? The governor. The, let me just be quite frank. 
the governor is holding that up. Look at the funding for education right now. The governor is holding up 20% around the state of New York, $5 billion, and our children can't receive the type of minimum education that is required <laughs> in the state constitution. Come on, that's exactly what it is. And do not be afraid to call it out. Because if we are afraid to call it out, and we're afraid to fight for our children so they can get the type of education to be the type of people that we want them to be. So that's what has to be done. Let me stop raising my voice. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Um, we appreciate and welcome the passion. Um, Assemblymember Gottfried, um, your comments? Uh, yeah, I, I think one important step is to make uh, a fairly big strategic uh, decision, uh, and that is to broaden uh, the movement to uh, to include the state university. Uh, you're you're leaving out uh, a huge chunk of the state legislature uh, for support if you're only talking about the city university. Um, and I, when I say only, I don't mean to diminish it. Uh, it's just you're leaving out. Uh, the bulk of the state. Uh, and I think the, the needs and the case are, are, are the same at, for both the state university and, and the city university. The, uh, it's different flavors of the same issue. Um, so that's the first thing. But the second thing is uh, you need to get to a point where legislators think of public higher education as a compelling issue uh, the same way we think about uh, elementary and secondary education. Uh, just about every legislator, when they think about the budget, uh, probably the first issue they think about, unless they're me, because as health chair, I think about Medicaid, uh, they think about school aid, and they mean elementary and secondary. Um, and that's because they hear about that from a whole slew of their constituents all the time. And we need to achieve that uh, with this proposition. Uh, and that means getting, getting all the individual constituents who are interested in this issue uh, riled up about it and riling okay. up their legislators, uh, whether it's students or former students or the parents of students or faculty. Yes. Uh, and you've also got to get uh, a lot of the labor movement uh, a very high item on their agenda. Something, member. I'm sorry to have cut off the last part that that, that you were saying, but uh, we appreciate your words, and and, and we certainly um, need to close. So um, I want to thank everyone um, for for having joined us, uh, not only the advocates, uh, but as well as our elected <laughs> officials. Um, and Andrea, um, yes. your Great. closing remarks. Thanks. Well, it's clear that to save CUNY, we need mass support from the CUNY community and beyond. This is the only, only the beginning of this campaign. We will not see success without this kind of coalition work. Bring in everyone you know who cares about quality public higher education. Other organizations are welcome to join the CUNY Rising Alliance. And I would like everyone to go to the CUNY Rising Alliance website, cunyrisingalliance.org, to sign a letter in support of the New Deal for CUNY. You'll find more information on the legislation there as well. So on behalf of CUNY Rising Alliance and PSC, thank you all for being here and for all the work you do. See you later.